Hello everybody, my name is Luke Marr and this is Hotline Mode and today on Hotline Mode we're getting into the Emmys 2024 Red Carpet Roast and Review. There's a lot of looks to talk about, way too many. So buckle up buttercups, it's gonna be a long ride. First up we have Aja Naomi King and she is wearing John Batista Valley. It's this beautiful cocktail dress and this really, really light, light, light pink with these sort of beautiful 3D faux flowers sort of jutting out of the neckline. I actually think it's really, really beautiful. I like the fact that also the flowers of the neckline are a little bit of a deeper shade of pink. Not much, but like just a little bit. I think it helps to sort of let them pop, even though again, the colors are so, so similar. But I do love this high-low skirt situation. I think it's fun. I think it's very John Batista Bali, but it doesn't also feel like big frou-frou tutu gown that we normally get. I think that this is nice. I think it works. I think that it adds a little bit of a regality and elegance and evening component. But at the same time, because it's really just like a cocktail dress with this of skirt over top gives it a little bit more casual a little bit easier to function walk carry yourself in i think she looks beautiful next up we have andrew scott who is wearing custom vivian westwood i think it's cool i like this idea of the brown and black which isn't normally some shades that i think work together super duper well suiting wise i think that something about the shawl is really cool i think that it's really strong but it's also curved it's black it really sort of pairs well against the brown that the rest of the suit is made out of i love the flounce that moves down the shirt there's not really like a super rigid collar situation either which I think is helpful to me I don't know exactly what the reference is but I think back to like early Vivian Westwood like pirate collection where she was referencing historical dress the way that like pirates actually wore these not like frilly lacy shirts but they did wear sort of flouncier more diaphanous things it was just part of being able to move as they walked about the ships so I don't know if that's exactly what the reference is it could be I don't know renaissance dress and all that but something about it reads pirate to me I actually think that it doesn't feel too arg matey. I like the pants. I like the shoes. Like, I think he looks great. It's fun and yet at the same time, like, very dapper. Next up, we have Anna Sawai, and she's wearing Vera Wang. I don't love it. Like, I don't think that she looks awful. Like, she's beautiful. She is. She's stunning. But at the same time, this sort of like cocktail dress with a big skirt underneath the cocktail dress as like an extension of the dress, I don't really understand. I also just think, again, the fabric isn't super kind on that second skirt. It just looks a little bit more wrinkled. And again, I understand that in transportation, like that's what happens. I don't expect anybody to have like fashion superpowers so that they could stop that but at the same time it still hurts the gown and something about even just the frill of like the original cocktail dress it doesn't like make me love it either so i'm just kind of like mm. and the other thing is it's so simple it's just like red a-line gown so without anything else to jazz it up and not being perfect it falls even flatter. Next up we have Iowa Debris and she is wearing Bottega Veneta. Listen, here's my thing about the dress. I was trying to figure out if these sequins that are on the dress were like actual sequins, if it was leather. Bottega described it as like a starfish printed sequin long dress. That was like what it was set. So like I still don't really know what exactly it is. It does have sequins on it. I'm pretty positive when I look really, really deeply. They're just clear sequins, and I think it's printed in this orange and black, and then this clear sequins are placed on top, and that's what gives it the shine. It's a really simple dress, and I think one of my big issues is the colors. It just reads Halloween to me. Sorry, it's just, I think, an American thing is like you see orange and you see black, and you're like, Halloween. Boo. Spooky. Somebody did say in one of my other videos, it looks a little bit like a koi fish. So like, I appreciate that. I think that's a good sentiment. So if you're not thinking Halloween, koi fish is also fair. It's just not my favorite dress. I think it's so simple. The slit is like fine. It's not awful, but it's not memorable. Next up we have Bowen Yang who's wearing Bodhi. I like this a lot. I like the white suit. I think the shawls are cool. Bodhi is like a very interesting menswear brand. It's really on the up and up. They make upcycled pieces. A lot of the pieces that they do, if they're intriguing, or sometimes like one of one, or very limited run of production. So if there's like a quilt and they make a jacket out of the quilt, you're only gonna get as many jackets out of that quilt as the quilt can 
make. Obviously the suit is cool, I think it works, but the thing that's really of interest to me is the red shirt that is going on underneath the suit. It's obviously this sort of bright red. It does have this little sort of non-scallop, but like somewhat scallop hem. Obviously it's not as like circular as a scallop hem, but swagged hem. And then it's fully at least embroidered or embellished with some sort of motif. And I assume that it's a reference to like Chinese culture Chinese textile, something along those lines, because the red with white, very sort of signature Chinese colors. Bowen also is Chinese. And again, if you look at like Chinese historical textiles, there's elements of that in there. So if that's what that is, I love it. I think it's beautiful. I think it's stunning. If that's not what it is, I apologize. I actually think it's a really cool way of going about referencing Chinese culture and Chinese textiles and still yet adding in this element of like nice suiting, crisp, clean, interesting. I liked. Next up we have Brie Larson who's wearing Chanel. Here's what I'm gonna say about this. I think I like it for the most part. I think that the color is really stunning. It's like a navy blue and or black. So how stunning it can be, I don't know. But I also think the silhouette is really, really great. And I feel like we're slowly but surely moving out of the era of Virginie Vior sort of dominating the Chanel ateliers. And I think that that's really important because whoever is the in-studio team, I think they're starting to just sort of make nice little things and I'm happy to see it. It's kind of what I want. The crystals and beading all over it nice easy again there's this idea of a flouncy sort of tiered thing but that's also very chanel and i also like the fact that it's not done in like a really 20s or 30s like heavy way i think that the length that the tier sort of starts at is good it's still feels not peplummy and not super like balloony and 20s sort of drop waisty. It has this very 1950s silhouette. I think the skirt underneath being really simple really really works. I just think this is a nice Chanel moment like the little ribbon at the waist I don't really need but like at the same time I'll take it. Next up we have Carrie Coon who's wearing Tom Brown. Like I like it. Again it feels like at least recently there's a lot of these Tom Brown red carpet looks that are very much so about deconstruction. We can see that on where the shoulder and the sleeve meet. Evidently like that's meant to be a reference to like shoulder pads and excess foam that's sitting there. You can see again like there's a lot of the seams that are very visible which normally you wouldn't really want if you're making like a beautifully constructed garment. It's this idea of a lot of these pieces sort of being about flipping the garment inside out and I think it's fine like I think it's cool it's this idea of constructionism the other thing that's really really interesting is there are three names apparently that might possibly go to Chanel one of them is Simone Port and Jacques Mousse one of them is Peter Moulier Valaya and the other one is Tom Brown so in a weird way, I don't know who's gonna get it. I'm unsure. I'm also just kind of waiting patiently. I don't really have like guesses. What I will say is if Tom was to go, I think it's really interesting to see this idea of things you would find in an atelier. This idea of muslins and constructing and quality, which Tom Brown does have his own haute couture label, so like that makes sense. But this is what garments would look like as they're being produced and as they're being made and all those kinds of things. I think it's interesting to see because we saw it with Dochi at the VMAs. We're seeing it now with Carrie Coon again. Like, is interesting to me, but I digress. Next up we have Chris Perfetti and he's wearing Christian Siriano. Listen, as far as like menswear goes, it's interesting. I don't mind it. It reads a little Iris Van Herpen to me personally, but like I'm okay with that because I like Iris Van Herpen. I don't see enough of her. I'll take it. I think the shirt's cool. I like the flouncy layer ruffle thing. And I like the fact that all of these little layers are also piped in black. I think it really sort of helps to add a little bit of an edge and outline. It's fine. It matches in with the pant. It's cool. I'll take it. Next up we have Christine Baranski and she's wearing Oscar de la Renta. I think it's nice. I think the color is really beautiful on her. I like this organza that really sort of shines and shimmers and beautiful floral motifs that run throughout it are also rather lovely, but they're also not like trying and fighting for the attention. Cause like obviously there's a lot going on. I think the color, I think the material, the way that the light reflects, the draping, the length, the floral motifs, like there's a lot that could be taking advantage of the garment and fighting for attention. And I feel like weirdly enough, it doesn't do that. The only issue that I really, really have is just the length. There's just something about the shoe, which like I don't mind like a very sort of low heel and or flat thing, like whatever, I don't really care, do your thing. But just something about the length I feel like doesn't really help there. Like the way that it hits feels a little awkward. But besides that, I actually think it's a rather lovely dress. Next up we have Connie Britton. She is wearing vintage Alexander McQueen. I don't love it. I think the issue is like the swag of fabric over top. It feels very like Grecian, but there's like kind of like fitted gown underneath, but it's meant to be flowing and then there's beading and it's just, it's a little 2006 for me right now. I still need at least like four years before we get back to there. 
I just don't love it. Not my favorite dress by a long shot. Next up, we have Davine Joy Randolph, and she is wearing Sophie Couture. Listen, I like the hooded style. I don't mind the draping around the sort of waist and like hip area. I think the color is honestly rather stunning on her. My one singular issue is the sleeve. Like A, I wish that there was two sleeves. I just hate like an asymmetrical sleeve. And also like if you have one sleeve, like why not have two? Or like if you only have one sleeve, like why only one? The other really annoying thing that I find is the way that like this ruching thing happens is it sort of comes in between the breast area and then comes down and the sleeve sort of has like the excess fabric here. So it sort of like creates this weird excess arm area. And I don't really understand why you would want that at all on, on anybody. Maybe if there were two sleeves and it was meant to be like a bat wing kind of thing, I could comprehend it a little bit more. But I think it makes it super weird because it's asymmetrical and there's only one sleeve and so like only one sleeve has this it just it seems strange to me i think that if the sleeves were like fitted better it would have been fine and i would have really enjoyed it and i would have been able to even deal with the one sleeve thing but like there's just something about this that doesn't comprehend logically to me again love the hood i think the color is really really great on her the jewelry works it's just that sleeve i don't understand next up we have dan levy who's wearing loewe now this is Honestly, a pretty simple black suit. It's a little fitted in the pant, which I feel like I haven't seen for kind of a minute. I feel like we've been doing a lot of wider legs. But the thing that's really sort of intriguing is the white shirt situation that is not really like a traditional shirt. It's almost like a piece of silk that is sort of bunched and crunched. And then whatever collar or like handkerchief or tie or whatever has been like flipped up in that very artistic Loewe, Jonathan Anderson, Manor, and Dan Levy and Jonathan Anderson worked together quite a bit, so like, it makes sense. I kind of knew immediately what we were looking at. I think it's cool. I think it's a cool concept. I'm not like obsessed with it, but like, I think it's an interesting way to go about looking at, again, menswear. Like, I find interesting menswear nice to see because at least, even if it works, even if it doesn't work, there's something to examine rather than just, oh, wow, a nicely fitted suit. And sometimes even then, is the suit really that nicely fitted? I don't know. All right, let's talk about Isaac Gonzalez and Rita Ora. I first saw Isaac Gonzalez in this beautiful pink Tamara Ralph, stunning sequined or beaded light baby pink dress with a sort of feather boa that hit the floor. And I was like, oh, gorgeous, amazing. Okay, cool. And then Rita Ora came and she was wearing a similar look. And the first thing that I said is, Rita Ora, what are you doing here? But I also was like, actually, I think Rita looks great. I know that like, obviously this look is almost exactly like Isa's, although it's not really exactly like, cause Rita's, although you can't see it in this picture, actually sort of does more of like a drape thing rather than being like embellished with sparkly beads. But again, pink, feather, cloak, cape, shawl, floor length thing. But I will say Rita's hair and like makeup and all that, I think really like sells it to me. I think it's really fun and I really like the way that she's done it. And I think it's again, like her embodying a character. So like, I appreciate you, Rita. I was kind of like, oh shit. But like they're wearing not the same thing, but like almost the same thing. And sometimes when people do like the who wore it best historically, it's kind of like you pull from different events and they're wearing similar things, but it's not always the same. And I don't really do who wore it best on Hot Mode because like, again, don't want to like pit women against women. And on top of it, it's like they're different dresses. And also like they wore it very, very differently. Maybe they also just picked two different dresses and like they didn't know. The thing is Isaac Gonzalez is wearing Tamara Ralph and then Rita Orr is also wearing Tamara Ralph and I'm like did they know? Tamara Ralph has to have known two of the same similar looks were going to the Emmys. Somebody also said that apparently they're friends Rita Ora and Isaac Gonzalez and like maybe this was like a thing that they were doing to like do press. I don't know but I just want to say that I'm a little bit skeptical because it's the same brand. Different brands wouldn't be skeptical at all, but the same brand, they would know at least that it was sent out. So yeah, I don't know. Mm, I liked it until I was starting to feel like there was a little bit to the story that I don't really believe, but they do actually both look great. So congrats to them. Next up we have Elizabeth Debicki. She is wearing Dior. It's really simple, black velvet dress, like really nipped in waist, a little bit of a hip bum. She looks pretty. There's not really anything to like say. Elizabeth Debicki is stunning. I always like wish it was a little bit more exciting, but whatever. 
Next up, we have Ella Purnell, and she's wearing Rabin. It's this beautiful chainmail style. It fits her ever so lusciously. Silver chainmail, classic Paco Rabin, 1960s, sort of futuristic styles, even though, again, like chainmail is obviously a little referencing. But I think the dress looks good. Obviously, I wish maybe there was a motif running through it or, or something like that, because they can do that now. But it's a pretty dress. It looks good on her, fits her. So, okay. And it's an unconventional, technically, material now. So, like, at least there's interest there. Next up, we have Greta Lee, who's wearing Loewe. Here's my thing about this dress. Like, I know that Loewe obviously is very artistic and intriguing-minded, and I do actually recognize, honestly, the neckline. I know that it looks like it's a little bit braided and just sort of wrapped around her neck, and it's a halter, but the dress is also quite wide. And I think that's maybe like what my intriguing thing is. I'm not saying that every dress has to be super sort of fitted and like hourglass shape and all that kind of stuff. I don't think it does, but I was intrigued by the silhouette in general because it just feels so simple yet so not curtain-like, but like a little bit curtain-like where it's just the fabric flows down. There's not really any like to it is how I feel. I'm really not my favorite dress on her. I don't, again, like hate it, but I just feel like it doesn't really do anything either. And that's my issue with a lot of the looks in general. Like, it's just not really much to talk about. You know what I mean? It's a white lace dress with a hanky panky collar. So, meh. Next up we have Hannah Einbinder. Here's the thing. I know that this is like a Louis Vuitton thing and we'll talk about it in a little bit with Sear Sharon. I don't love the like mitochondria doesn't to me work super duper well and I think maybe had it been like all the same fabric I'd be able to like get behind it a little bit more even though again like it'd be a stretch I don't know what exactly it is it looks a little bit latex it could be I don't know some sort of like treated silk I, I, I don't know but I just think it's so shiny here that again mitochondria biology-esque to me the rest of the dress is so matte it's a toughie and with Sears Ronan, we'll talk about it, but like all the same fabric so you can kind of deal with it. But this, I just, it's hard for me. I want better for Hannah Einbinder, I'm a Sam. Next up we have Alona Mar, Luke Mar, Alona Mar. Shout out to my sister somewhere deep in our lineage, I'm sure. She looks great, I love this. I also know that she went through a lot with the Olympics. People were really like talking poorly about her body and I think it's messed up. And also it's actually vintage Oscar de la Renta. And so it's not even that it was designed for her. Whoever styled her in this, really brilliant, did a really great job because normally I'd say uh, a peplum, but the thing that I think is really, really smart about this, obviously Alona is a little bit wider up here and that's because like she's literally a rugby player so like you have to do what you have to do. I think the peplum is so smart because it helps to balance out what's going on in the shoulders into the waist. And it doesn't do it again in a way where it's like, oh, well hide this person's body because it does not conform to like the conventional idea of like a woman's body and what it should look like. Rather it says, no, 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 we're just gonna highlight that. And we're going to make sure that that looks as beautiful as the dress is. And I think that's really important for people to understand and also for designers and also stylists to comprehend is that you can actually highlight somebody's body without hiding their body. And I think that that needs to be a little bit more of a mentality that we think about going forward. And I think this is a really, really great example of that. I think she looks beautiful. I think the blue velvet is spectacular on her. She's not hiding one of her best attributes. Like, I'm really happy about it. Us more girls gotta stick together. Next up we have Janelle James. She's wearing Marquesa. Listen, it's fine. Like, I like it. The red is cute. I like the slit. The flowers look a little cold to me, and I know that that's not her fault. I think that's just how they were made. I wish that they were a little bushier, a little more flounced out rather than looking a little smushed. I think the color works on her. Again, like, she sells it to me. I think the hair is also really smart that we're, like, playing it, obviously, to the other side when it's, like, a one-shoulder situation, and so I'm not really looking at the fact that, like, it's a one-shoulder situation, which is helpful to me. Overall, it's fine. It's cute. Next up, we have Jean Smart, and she's wearing Laura Bakshi. I love it. I think it's great. I think it's really simple, but, like, glamorous. I don't need Jean Smart to, like, prove anything to me, so... I love. I think the navy blue is luscious in this very opaque style. It fits so, so beautifully. And then the sheer comes out, creates this cape. She looks ever so regal, ever so effortless. Like she just, she knows. It's giving Deborah, and she's been doing it such a long time. She understands how to dress herself. 
and I'm really happy and I, I like it a lot. Next up we have Jennifer Aniston. She's wearing Oscar de la Renta. No offense, there's not really much to say. It's a beautiful Oscar embellished gown. It's pearls and it creates this little fan shape. It's very art deco. Like if we look up close, like it's a spectacular dress in and of itself. But like, what is Jennifer Aniston doing? in it, nothing, she's just existing. And I think that's my issue is I want a little bit more from Jen. And I know she's not a fashion girl, but at the same time, like you don't come here to be like, oh, she's a, she's not a fashion girl. That's why I'm just gonna watch this white gay man destroy people. No, it's not why we're here. Like, it's a pretty dress. I just wish that she would embody it a little bit more. Maybe it's the picture. Maybe she embodied it somewhere else. But like, it just, it doesn't feel that embodied anyway. I wish she would like be a little riskier. Just a little bit. I know that she's like the host of a morning show, but next up we have Jeremy Allen White. Again, I just like, he's wearing Calvin Klein and like, it's a nice suit, sure, cool, but like, nah. Nah, it's just, there's not really anything there to like talk about. I want intrigue, interest. Everybody else can do intrigue and interest with their shooting. Why can't you? And I get it, like, it's the leading man thing. Like, they don't want to differ from that, but like, I'm bored of that. So, so bored of that. Next up, we have Jessica Gunning. She is wearing Rodarte. I actually really, really like the dress. The only thing that I really don't love is the sleeve, because I just don't really understand the flounce on the top of it. I feel like it's weird. I just don't know if I've ever seen like something like that before. And also the way that when it flounces out, you can see like obviously like a cap sleeve and then they've added this little sort of black velvet flounce on top. And I just wish that then the flounce had come all the way around. It's almost like, I don't know, armor. That's the only strange thing to me. The rest of the dress I think fits her nicely. I like the blue flowers that wrap around the collar and the neckline. I wish we had done the full Monty on the sleeve. Like if we were gonna do flouncy sort of cap sleeve thing, do it all the way around. That's my only issue. Otherwise, I think she looks really lovely. Next up, we have Jonathan Bailey. And like, this is what I mean when I'm saying like, just sell the garment. The pose, the fact that the cummerbund is there and the shirt is sort of undone, but like the jacket and he has his hands in his pockets and like the pose, like you can wear something that's a little bit more simple and still sell yourself as like a cool character that is vibing and has a feeling. Like he understands how to do it. And this is what I mean, like you can 100% change the way that you are perceived based on not only the garments that you're wearing, but also the way that you wear the garment. This is like the perfect example of that. I don't need like a poise, dainty pose. It's like, no, sell me on something. Sell me on the fact that you are in fact a, a TV star who is up for an award. Next up we have Juno Temple. She's wearing vintage Cavalli. I like it. The color is beautiful. It's a lovely little bias cut style. And then on top of it, I like the little slits that make a spiral towards the bottom of the dress. The color is luscious and it flows and it's so easy. So I think she looks good. I like it, it's a nice dress. Next up we have Karen Pittman and she is wearing Amelia Wickstead. And here's the thing, like the dress actually I think is rather lovely on her. The black is nice. I think that the rose pink floral motif is fine. It's wrinkled and I think that's the one singular issue is like if it just wasn't wrinkled it would be fine and I'd be like oh beautiful dress fits her really nice blah, 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 blah. just the wrinkling throws it off especially because it's in that silky silk and it's just noticeable and I can't not and the gloves are not the same shade of black so like ditch those no we don't need a glove nobody needs a glove it's okay you don't need a glove you're fine manicure cool easy no manicure also cool easy I don't really care just don't wear a glove next up we have Kristen Wiig she's wearing Oscar de la Renta I love it. It's beautiful. Again, Oscar I think is a really, really great brand for a beautiful dress. Lots of beautiful embellishments. I love, it almost looks like a weave, but obviously it's all pieces of metal beading that is there and laid and creates this like intriguing braid, rattan thing, but it's not because it's all in silver. I love the fact that the neckline with the sort of spiky edges matches the hemline. The silhouette is beautiful on her. You don't really have to do like a lot because the dress is doing it all for you. It's just, it's a cool dress. It's an intriguing concept. And I like the fact that again, it's silver and it's metallic. You end up looking like a tin man and silver can be very defeating very quickly. Next up, we have Lily Gladstone. She's wearing custom Rodarte. The dress itself is fine until I get to this one off the shoulder strap. I don't get it. Popper plate that I actually really love. And I think it's one of my favorite thing about Lily Gladstone style is at least with red carpet stuff, she she always has kind of like a metallic or beading or some sort of like intriguing aspect. And even though that this is like asymmetrical and it's obviously a little bit not 
polished perfectly. I love it. I also am intrigued by whatever is etched and or embossed into this piece of copper. It looks like some sort of floral motif and like as somebody that's into plants, I am intrigued by what it is. And I just, I think it's a cool concept. I just don't love black that juts out of the side. And I understand like maybe you need to wear that to keep it up, but at the same time, like I'm sure there's other things you could have done or at least like add two straps. Again, I just don't comprehend like the asymmetrical thing. Why? But besides that, I actually like the dress. I think it's cool. I like the copper piece. I'm sure that it has meaning. I don't know what it is, but whatever the meaning is, I'm sure that Lily, it's positive and nice and wonderful and I'm happy to see it. Next up we have Maya Rudolph who's wearing Chloe. I like it. Listen, Chloe is what Chloe is. Shemina Kamali is a new designer and it's really taken off and I love this sort of cape style that's built into the dress and it's flouncy and it's this beautiful chiffon and it's like this mauve, but it's like a muted mauve. And I also love the jewelry. I like the snake heads that wrap around the neck and also the cuff, the bracelet. I think it's fun. I think it plays in. It's cool to me. I'm fine with it. I like it. Color's good. And also I feel like the hair and like the cape thing match and like she, she gets it. Next up we have Meryl Streep and she is wearing, I believe it's Alexander McQueen. I don't know 100% but like the bag is Alexander McQueen and so I assume the rest of the suit is Alexander McQueen. I like this all pink on her. I like the pussy bow blouse. I like the pant leg. Again, like McQueen I just think is a brand where it's like the tailoring has to be on it, has to be sharp. Obviously like the pose isn't exactly helping with that but at the same time like it's not hurting it either. I love the colors. I love the shoulders. I love the pussy Low. like I think she looks nice. Next up we have Mindy Kaling and she's wearing Gaurav Gupta. It's honestly like pretty simple Gaurav Gupta. It has that sort of like intriguing plisse kind of style but it's also covered in embellishments. It, the dress fits her well. I don't mind the plisse wrap around off the shoulder thing. The embellishment is like fine. It's okay. It's not really like doing all that much for me. I think that the plisse thing is enough but it's okay. Next up we have Moika Hoshi and she's wearing Miu Miu. This is a custom piece and it seems like it's fully pleated and then there is the sort of drop waist crystal section with feathers as well that obviously like has a very 20s kind of reference to it. It's just the feathers and the movement and the drop waist and the crystals. I like the crystals that run throughout all the pleating on both the top and the bottom of the dress. I think you have to like be into the era of like the 20s to be obsessed with it but like I don't hate it by any means or any stretch. I think it's fine. I think it's working. It's doing its flapper job even though I think historically flappers might not wear things like this. I think it's okay. At least it's like an interesting silhouette that we don't see all the time. Next up we have Naomi Watts. She's wearing Balenciaga. I assume that it's meant to be like wrinkled like this on purpose just because it's Balenciaga but if it's not I'm like frustrated by that. I think the green is actually really beautiful on her. I think that like obviously if the wrinkling wasn't really present it's a it's basic it's a fitted green ball gown but like I'd also say she has a little bit old school Balenciaga like I can get into that I'm not mad about it the wrinkling is the one issue and like that's a fabric sure but we also knew that that was the fabric when we chose it next up we have Nava Mao and she is wearing Gigi Good who is an up-and-coming designer formerly a drag race contestant I like this I like the organza I like the red I like the fact that as it moves up around the neckline it formulates and like flares and curves and things like that the slit is maybe a little high and I also like I hate a right up the middle slit I do. I really, really do. Because it just put us in the back. I always think they look better. Or like a side slit. I do like the color on her. I like the fit of it. It's just that slit. They're just hard to sell. Next up we have Nicola Coughlin. She's wearing Prabal Garang. I know that Nicola Coughlin's been doing like very sculptural, architectural styles. I just, I think my real issue is the silver sequins. Like it's not at all really, well, a little bit is the shape of like the dress or the top tunic thing. And then the skirt is fine. I think it's like the top tunic thing is so structured and then the skirt is kind of not diaphanous, but like definitely less structured. And I think that's odd, but also I just think it's a silver sequence. I think that there are really great ways to do silver and metallics. And I think that we've seen that Ella Purnell, we've seen Kristen Wiig, like there's ways to go about doing silver that can look really not like the Tin Man. And this unfortunately to me like feels costumey. The materiality element is just not great. I wish something different had happened because even a darker silver sequin maybe would have been better. There's just something with that you say, 
talent show. And I think that the sculptured part doesn't really help. I actually really love it off the shoulder. Maybe if the waist portion was a little bit slimmer, there's a lot going on there and it's unfortunate. Next up, we have Nicole Bahari and she's wearing Chanel. And again, like, I don't know what it is about Chanel, but working right now and I'm okay with that. And I would like to keep that going. So whatever you people want me to do to keep this being the Chanel custom stuff that I'm seeing, tell me if you want me to hate it more. I'll do that if you want me to like it. I don't know. Whatever you want me to do. I love this off the shoulder. I love the bow. It's obviously not a lace. It looks almost like it's like a black velvet and those are flowers that are in it. It just, it looks really nice on her. It looks really, really nice. It fits. It's simple. It's clean. It's easy. It's understandable. There's no big hullabaloo. There's no crazy styling that I'm thinking, oh, why? So yes, no, Chanel, whatever you want. Just let's all go back to enjoying things. I would like for that. It's been a long time. Next up we have Quinta Brunson and she's wearing George Chakra. I think it's fine. Like I don't, I'm not like obsessed with it. I do really like the organza. I like the organza. I do. I really do. I blame Giorgio Romani. But there's something about like a black organza that shines and is radiant and is fun. Like it's cool. I like the, the bust area and I like the way that it sort of like peeks out just to the top. The bows I'm not like sold on, but I think at the same time it's like the organza is almost like a shell over the dress. And so like the bows are kind of tying up the shell to the other dress underneath. And so like I can comprehend it. I just don't like totally love them. And again, it's always hard when there's a lot of moving parts to a look because it kind of makes it difficult to focus on one section as the real sort of star. But overall, I could do it. Next up, we have Reese Witherspoon. She's wearing Dior. I think it's fine. It's not really super intriguing. I mean, it's a black dress. It's like a netting and they've embellished it and they've embroidered it with this beautiful floral butterfly flower thing that moves all through the gown. So like, it's, it's fine. It's not really super exciting, but like, it could be worse. There could be a belt on it. So as far as everybody else has gone, I've been pretty lenient. If it's just like simple, it's the Emmys, whatever, cute thing. Sure. Next up, we have Richard Gad. He's wearing Loewe. I didn't know Loewe made kilts if this is a kilt assume it's a kilt i don't know if it's kilt but i would assume in the back it's probably a kilt but it's very sort of to me scottish wedding formal and like that's okay i've only ever been to like one formal scottish event and it was a wedding so it's more just scottish formal kilt formal you wear a kilt you wear your high socks and you're not supposed to wear underwear and you wear your suit jacket and your bow tie and all of that and i really i like it it's fun and the little the bag and the shoe like it it works it's very scottishy to me but it's also Loewe. Jonathan Anderson, I believe, is Northern Irish. So, like, there's a mixture in there of, like, Northern Irish, Scotland, all that kind of stuff. So, this is cool. Intriguing take on menswear. Before anybody's like, it's a skirt. It's not a skirt. It's a kilt. They're different. A skirt is a skirt. A kilt is not a skirt. Next up, we have Sierra Sharona. Now, remember when I was talking about, like, mitochondria? This it could be that, but it's not. It's Or at least it's less that because again like the fabric is fine you have this bandeau up top and a high-waisted skirt and like those match those are great same fabric drape situation again because it's not that like rubbery latex that's glossy and shiny it's easier and because it's a chiffon again it sort of flows and you can believe in this draping thing so like you can kind of get behind it a little bit more i do like the color on her a lot actually this dark blue really really dark blue is rather lovely do i wish that maybe it like did a double Drape thing, sure, but like that's not Nicolas Jasker, so like I'm not gonna ask for that. It's okay, that's fine. Next up, we have Sarah Paulson. She's wearing Prada. <laughs> it's Prada, so like I like it. It's always complex and it's weird and it's funny and funky to me. I actually love this blue dress that's over top. I like the sleeves a lot. I like the baton neckline. I love the way that it cinches in at the waist and then sort of falls down and is pencil skirty. The black skirt underneath with the white bow at the back, like maybe I don't love, but at the same time, like. Vitra Prada is a wonderful woman and we just are really happy about her and we also like Raph, so. But what I'll say is like, if you think it's ugly, fair. And I think I always say that about Prada. It's like, if you don't get it, that's okay. You don't have to get it, whatever. I do think that obviously there's this idea of layering. Again, I really love the blue dress. I don't really love the black and the white underneath it, but there's probably a reason for it. And I do appreciate that Sarah Paulson always goes for things, but if you don't get it, you don't have to get it. I don't need... Yeah, you're good. We're fine. Okay. Next up, we have Scott Evans, and he's wearing Paul Smith, and like I just love it. I like the brown suit. I love the turquoise buttons and the brooch and the jewelry. Like the blue and the brown really pop off of each other. He looks great. He looks wonderful. Shout out to Paul Smith. 
solid. Next up we have Cheryl Lee Ralph and she is wearing Versace. I think it's nice. It's really simple but also like very flattering, very figure hugging, really lovely. I like the halter neck, the Medusa medallion in the middle of the bow. That's how you know it's Versace. I personally wouldn't put it there but like it's fine. I think that the little sort of beading and crystals that go across like it all it all works. I'm cool with it. Next up we have Selena Gomez. She's wearing Ralph Lauren. Listen it's Simple, but like effective. It's a black velvet gown. It's form fitting. She's wearing a halter and she's been wearing a lot of like halter styles like this recently. So fine with it. Like I think she looks nice. The silver that sort of embellishes the neckline and the straps of the halter, nothing really like right home about, but doesn't look awful either. Obviously I'd like a little bit more like meh, but again, like everybody else, it looks nice, it fits well, I can't be super mad about it, even though like I want to, cause like, growth. She looks good. Next up we have Sofia Vergara. She is wearing Dolce & Gabbana. Listen, like red, the draping for the most part, I think actually is rather nice on her. The form, the fit, it's great. My one serious issue is just like, there's a line of the draping that sort of creates this like arrow like this. And it just like points right at like, the pelvic region, I don't really understand why. And I know that that's probably not intentional, but like, I always have to ask like, why? But besides that, it's again, cool, sure, whatever, fine. I do have to say that overall, it's pretty boring. Next up we have Tyler James, he's wearing Dolce & Gabbana. He's just wearing essentially a shirt, but it's a sleeveless shirt. It's like a waistcoat shirt, a waist shirt. If you have muscles like that, I respect it. Put them out there, but I do like the sort of pleating, very sort of tuxedo shirt. The pants are fine, fit well. He's also like a model, so it's kind of easy to put things on him and like he'll look good. Again, intriguing take on menswear. It's not too formal, but still has like the trappings of traditional suiting just without the actual suit jacket part. So like, I'll take it, it's fine. I know I keep saying a lot of it is fine, but like a lot of it just, it is, like it's okay. Finally, we have Viola Davis. She is wearing Zuhair Murad. I just don't love half black, half white. I think it's just like weird. I'd rather that those two things sort of merge together better. And the other issue that I'll say is like the draping again, like at the waist thing. I don't know why it like, they look like they're overlapping and like the black portion goes into the white portion, but goes into that. And like, that's not what I meant by I want them to like work together, the black and the white. You know, it's pretty much parallel line until we cross at like two weird intersections and like fix the traffic light there, put a four way stop sign. I don't know, but like do something to help that intersection. Cause it feels like there's a lot of crap is going on. She looks beautiful and it does fit well, but again, it just like, it's a lot of dress, even though it's such a simple kind of dress. So that is it, we are done. Let's talk about best and worst because we all want to move on from here. Best, I'm gonna put Aja Naomi King, I'm gonna put Andrew Scott, I'm gonna put Bowen Yang, I'll put in there. Ilona Mar, I'm gonna put in there. Jean Smart, I'm gonna put in there. Jonathan Bailey, I'm gonna put in there. Kristen Wiig, Nicole Bahari, Scott Evans, Selena Gomez, I'll put in there. Charlie Ralph, that's good, that's good. As for worst, oh, Hannah Einbinder, that one was sad, I miss. Jennifer Aniston, just cause it's boring, it's always boring. Jeremy Allen White, cause also like boring. Karen Pittman, cause the wrinkles. Naomi Watts, also cause the wrinkles. Nicola Coughlin, I just, I didn't get it. Viola Davis, cause again, I just didn't get it. And I'll put like Sarah Paulson in there because most people probably won't get it. So, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this Emmy's Rose review. I will see you guys in the next video and TTYL.